English speakers around the world are familiar with a lot of German words, whether it be those words that have been borrowed from the German language and are used in everyday English language, or whether it just be those brand names that we're all familiar with. In this video I'm looking at just how those English speakers pronounce or mispronounce these German words and the proper way of pronouncing them. In our last video we were looking at German jokes and to be honest we had a little bit of a laugh at the expense of German me. We got him to try and explain those German jokes in English and he was struggling a little bit. Ja, ich war alle voll gemein zu mir. Oh, ist only a bit of fun German me. Ja, aber alle haben kommentiert und haben gesagt, ich habe voll den schlechten Akzent, wenn ich Englisch spreche. Ich war voll traurig. Well, maybe you'll think twice next time before you butt in in one of my videos and give me a hard time about my research or whatever it is you think I'm doing wrong. Niemals. <laughs> We're going to get straight into the list then and this first part of the list deals with those everyday words that are used in the English language that have been borrowed from German and we'll start with a couple of ghost stories or spirit tales. These are a couple of words that are often quite surprising for Germans or at least amusing when they find out that we use these in the English language. I'm going to try and give you the English pronunciation first which is a little bit difficult when you've been training the brain so hard for so many years and speaking German pretty much as your main language every day but here we go we've got we're talking of course about the Zeitgeist and Poltergeist two completely different concepts of course but both contain the word Geist now the word Geist is of course the name for spirit or ghost in German and let's take the first one then let's take Zeitgeist the Zeitgeist I've got a de definition here from the Oxford English Dictionary um, it's meant to be the defining spirit or mood of a particular period of history as shown by the ideas and beliefs of the time. Recorded from the mid-19th century, the word is German and comes from Zeit for time, Geist for spirit. So you can see, for those of you that also know German, you can see that the usage is absolutely correct and one-to-one -one it's been adopted. It's just really the pronunciation that is a little bit weird for German is the correct pronunciation of course would be Zeit Geist. As English speakers we are mainly not aware that the German Z has its very own particular sound which is like pronouncing a T-S but at the front of a word so if you take the word cats or that's or hats the tss sound at the end we don't have it on at the front of any of our words but in German that's the way that a, a Z works so it is Zeitgeist and the Poltergeist then we know this as a spirit which moves things around. There was a very famous movie in the, I think I'm going to say it was the early 80s but it might have just a bit snuck into the end of the 70s. Let me know down below if you know when Poltergeist, the original movie, came out. Pretty good movie, pretty dated these days if you look at the uh, special effects. I loved it back in the day but the special effects really are quite dated. There's quite a lot of stop motion. But anyway, what is a Poltergeist? Um, the pronunciation in English is pretty much um, okay. We say poltergeist, poltergeist. In German would be poltergeist. Pretty much roughly there. The um, ER on the end of polter. We'll get back to that when we look at another word and the difficulties that uh, English have differentiating between two particular sounds. But poltergeist, we get that pretty much right. Um, the origin of this word, of course, is another spirit and polter. Poltan is the verb to clatter about or make noise, so you can see where this comes from. It's a, it's a spirit, an evil spirit that throws things around the room and clatters about and makes a lot of noise and kerfuffle. One word that got adopted by English speakers around the world, I think because of the Second World War, is the word ersatz. When we talk about ersatz products, they were common after the war while they were still rationing and certain items that had been or are now Everyday items were luxury goods because of rationing and of course the negative effects on the availability of certain things of the war. They were referred to, uh, obviously there were replacement products that were referred to as ersatz, ersatz products. And this comes from the German for replacement, ersatz. The pronunciation got lost along the way. The difference, ersatz, ersatz. It's that very clear German E that is the same in every situation it's an a a sound nice big open mouth but in english it's ersatz we've got this lazy i think we've got more 
reason to actually use umlaut letters than the Germans because we put these lazy umlaut sounds everywhere. They're not quite as well defined defined as a, u and u, but we've got all these lazy ersatz. You know what I mean? Another word we use one-to-one, -one, exactly how it's, how it's used in German, is the word, wait for it, this is the English pronunciation, as I was saying, these lazy umlaut sounds. Kaput, kaput. Sorry to my German friends, it's not the word kaput that you are used to. It's kaput. It's one of our lazy vowels again. We certainly don't make a big effort a lot of the time to pronounce our vowels very cleanly or crisply. There's, I think there's too many influences in the English language that have been attacking it from either side. We don't really know what our vowel sounds are, whereas they're very clear in German. Kaput became kaput. I found something interesting in the dictionary, by the way. The usage in English is exactly the same. Something which is broken, useless, no longer working or effective. The origin, apparently, is from the late 19th century, um, from German kaput, of course, but that, in turn, comes from the French to be kapot. It's something to do with a, uh, in a card game, if you are without tricks in a card game, to be kapot. Any French experts out there that can shed some light on that? I found that very interesting. Here are a couple of words that I would associate more with American English. I don't think these are too common in English English. Uh, first one being the use of the word Gesundheit. Gesundheit, I think you would find the Americans pronouncing it. It's not too far away from the German Gesundheit. 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 They use it in exactly the same, well, almost exactly the same way, not really being aware of what the original meaning of it, of it is. The word Gesundheit in German is used in the same way when somebody sneezes. You say in German Gesundheit, as in bless you, would be the direct English, English, uh, British English equivalent, but it means health, of course. It is a word for health. That's what many American English speakers probably do not know. I get the idea that there's this um, concept that it's a lot nicer and a lot more polite to say bless you rather than to say Gesundheit. Any Americans watching, let me know if that's right. I think I got the idea from a Hollywood film, actually. There was some couple where the wife or the girlfriend was really disappointed that her husband or boyfriend would always say Gesundheit instead of bless you, and she thought bless you was more romantic and more, more polite and um, one day he actually said, bless you. But looking at the mean, there's certainly nothing impolite about wishing somebody health. If some of you sneeze, it's a sign that you maybe have got a cold or something, so it's very logical to wish somebody health, surely. One word that has become very, very well known worldwide because of a certain company, online app company, rival to taxis, um, known as Uber. This is a word that the Americans have been using a long time for emphasis um, in times of you are uber sensitive, you are very extra, really sensitive, um, probably coming from the concept of the Übermensch. The German pronunciation of Uber is, of course, because German has umlauts and English doesn't. There is a difference between U and U. It's, in this case, it would be Uber. Mentioning there the Übermensch, there are a lot of terms that are used in the English language that come from philosophy, uh, psychology, because of prominent German psychologists and, and philosophers. But the word Uber, the bastardization of Uber, gets used very commonly in American slang, just as emphasis, like your Uber friendly, Uber sporty, Uber whatever. You just want to emphasize and say you're, oh, it's pretty much used as a synonym for over or super or whatever like that in English, but pronounced Uber, of course. Or strictly speaking, in most regions of America, where they pronounce the R on the end of a word very clearly, Uber. Names of items of German cuisine have, of course, also made it into the uh, English language, particularly in America, where you will quite often hear people talk about German sausages as being worsts, brats, bratwursts. You'll also, also hear of frankfurters or Frank Furters, and my American accent's not very good. And of course, the very well known one that is also a slang term for something else with a similar shape to a sausage, which is wiener. Now, let's have a look at those words and worst. Once again, we've got our very strange, unpronounced, non descript vowel in there that sounds a bit like a German umlaut, but, but lazy. The correct pronunciation for the word sausage is, of course, Wurst. Wurst. And then we have 
essentially two regional names. A Frankfurter would be a Frankfurter. In everyday language, it's just somebody who comes from Frankfurt, from the city of Frankfurt. And the Wiener would actually be Wiener, would be somebody who is a resident of Vienna, somebody who's from Vienna. The capital of Austria being, of course, Wien. And that brings us also to something which is not a sausage, but also an absolute staple of fast food. What about the hamburger? Surely this is a German Frikadelle that originated in Hamburg or was imported to the USA by Hamburger, people originating from the town of Hamburg. Staying with the subject of food then, we also have the term Delicatessen, a slightly different spelling in English than to German. It is, of course, a perfectly good German word. That said, one that has been misused and interpreted differently. The Americans and nowadays also the British will talk of a delicatessen or the deli or maybe the deli counter, delicatessen counter. It's very much a shop or the counter, the, the, the department in a store, a shop where cold cuts are served. So the equivalent of the Wurst Wurstticker, Wurst und Käse, cheese and cold cuts, etc. Of course in America now there is a great tradition of delis where you can go and sit and have a sandwich or whatever, typically have to stay for something to drink and whatever. It does of course come from the German word Delikatesse. For some reason it's in the plural Delikatessen. I suppose a deli is where you would get Delicacies, which is the meaning of the word delicatessen, in the plural, in multiple amounts, in multiple different kinds, so delicatessen. How about this last one then from the list of everyday language before we get into the brand names? This one's difficult for me to pronounce in English, but I'll give it a go. Schadenfreude, the German being of course Schadenfreude. Uh, the meaning is exactly the same, the English use it because there is a lack of a word what a single word with this meaning. I think you'd have to say in English it's taking joy from the misfortune of others. Or in German it's obviously we've got this perfectly great compound, practical compound noun, Schadenfreude. Freude is joy. Schaden is of course something like damage, so the damage incurred by others gives you this Freude, this, this joy. Now the interesting thing about the pronunciation for me is that I think there are a lot of unusual sounds in the German language that people say are very difficult for the English to pronounce, like the German R that comes from the throat, so richtig sprechen, but I don't think it's really critical if you pronounce German words with an English sounding R, so richtig sprechen, people would still understand what you're saying, and indeed in Germany there are lots of different regional versions of R's in the south, it's very rolled, where I live it's very much in the throat, and in the north we get something close to an English sounding R anyway, so that's not really critical. What I think is the most difficult sound to pronounce in the English language, or the two sounds that it's very difficult for the English to differentiate between, is if a word ends in just an E in German, like Schadenfreude, or ends in ER. It's very difficult for the English to distinguish between the two. It was when we were talking about Poltergeist, wasn't it? Polter. An English person wouldn't really make naturally make any distinction between Freude and Polter. Say Polter, Freude. Polter, Freude. This, the ending is the same, this lazy open thing, because we don't really have any distinction. But of course in German it is very, very, very important to distinguish between Enter, a duck, and Enter, which is a key on your computer keyboard. Or indeed a Deutsche, which is a German woman, female person, or Deutsche. Deutsche, Deutsche. I hear no end of English speakers who have a very, very good level of German, but still find it difficult, especially when they're speaking, when they're in the flow, distinguishing between ER and E at the end of a word, or particularly in a compound noun like Poltergeist, they tend to let that Polter, Polter get very wishy-washy. Let's round off then quickly with some brand names. Aldi and Lidl are the two supermarket chains that have conquered the world, very much present in the UK nowadays. And I think you'd heard, hear people though talking more of Aldi and Lidl. Or maybe even Aldi's and Lidl's. We tend to put an S on the end like it was some kind of family or something. Well, I suppose they are. It's the Aldi brothers, isn't it? I think in the UK we pronounce the brand name Adidas 
relatively closely to the German, maybe with a more English sounding A. My Northern English sounding A is very close to the German anyway. It's not Adidas, which would maybe be more like that in the South. Whereas I think the Americans do tend to say Adidas more, which is quite a long way away from Adi Dassler, Adolf Dassler, the founder of the company, of course, and his brother, of course, who went off to found the rival company Puma. Not Puma, as we say in English, Puma. It's the same animal, but it's a different pronunciation in German. Then, of course, we have our car manufacturers known in the English speaking world as BMW, Volkswagen, we also have Mercedes Benz, and Porsche or Porsche. We're back to our difficult E on the end of a word. Would of course be in German Porsche, with this very nicely defined E that isn't Porsche. Then we have Mercedes Benz. We've got our Z back again, so it's sound. It's more a Z in English. And talking of Mercedes Benz, or rather Daimler, as we maybe should refer to it, there was in fact a British independent car manufacturer way back when called Daimler. They, I don't know the background to the story exactly, but it was an independent car maker that bought the rights from the German company Daimler to use the word, to use the name Daimler. They bought the rights to that, but of course in English, English it was Daimler. Eventually the company merged or was taken over by Jaguar, and I remember Daimler cars being produced. They were very much the same models as Jaguars. Maybe the petrol heads, people who know about cars, vintage cars, can fill us in down below, leave a comment. Let us know the full background story to that. Of course, there was an English company called Daimler. Maybe should have been called Daimler. Volkswagen, of course, comes from the German Volkswagen. In German, just like BMW gets um, abbreviated, it's quite often just VW, VW, more so than in English, I believe. English would The English would tend to pronounce Volkswagen in full, more so than abbreviated, but it's Volkswagen, people's car, the car of the people. BMW, BMW in German stands for Bayerische Motorenwerke, so Bavarian Motor Factories. I'll leave you with one last car manufacturer. Do you know, Germans out there, do you know what, how Opel is pronounced in English? Trick question, it's marketed as Vauxhall. Uh, I think there's no real problem pronouncing Opel. Opel, Opel, different O. But to this day, in certainly in the UK, Opel cars are marketed as Vauxhall. So it's not Opel Corsa, it's Vauxhall Corsa. And probably my favorite mispronounced brand ever is the famous beer brand that also is successful and well known in the UK and known as Lowenbrau. Where are our umlauts when we actually need them? Obviously, we haven't got them, so we don't know how to pronounce Löwenbräu, the brew, the lion's brew, famous Bavarian beer, of course. That reminds me, of course, of an anecdote from a friend of mine, an old friend of mine who is from Germany. He went to England for a period of time whilst he was studying to brush upon his English, and he went into a, an off-license and wanted to buy some Löwenbräu and actually ordered some, asked for some Löwenbräu, so, uh, cans of Löwenbräu, and didn't really get very far because the shop assistant had no idea what he was talking about until he pointed to the cans of, oh, Lowenbrow. Well, that's left me very thirsty. I'm going to pop off and maybe have a beer. Um, thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy the video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so yet, uh, you can subscribe. That would be great. Also, let me know what words I've missed out. What are the words that are commonly used in England or the brand names that people know in the English speaking word that get mispronounced? What are your funniest examples? I look forward to reading your comments. Thanks again for watching. Macht's gut, Leute.